I couldn't believe it. Right. Then I got the check mark. Then I got validated. I'm like, holy. Then I sold an $18 million place. And then I joined Sirhan. And it's just like, wow, it was dark for a very long period of time. 10 years, man. I was eating dollar pizza. I was sleeping on my friend's couches. I was Airbnb being my apartment so that I could pay rent literally like not too long ago. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Sean and Matt Show. In today's episode, Sean, for the first time ever, we are going to have on a guest. I am very excited. Our guest today is an international real estate broker. He's closed more than $100 million worth of real estate representing buyers, sellers, and developers in the New York City market and beyond. He specializes in high-end luxury as well as the new development market he is a bravo tv personality and celebrity real estate broker introducing niall lundgren niall welcome to the show thank you so much i really uh, appreciate you having me on today did i miss anything in that long list of accolades i mean there's there's a couple things i mean i work at sirhan i think uh you know in my real estate career there's been a number of big successes that i've had but you know, joining up with Ryan and being a part of Sirhan as of as of late has been, uh, you know, a career changer for me, and I'm really excited to 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 be there. Yeah, and, and we'll get to that. And obviously, Sirhan carries a lot of weight. And I I intentionally left out that name in your introduction because I feel like you've done such a good job with your own personal brand that your own name carries the whole weight. And and you know, you don't need that brokerage name, but that certainly that will cover something that will cover now. Um, you, you just got back from Egypt, so may, maybe you're still jet lagged. Appreciate you, you, you know, you, you being on here with us. I have to ask, when you're in Egypt, between learning how to, you know, kite surf and sailing on a yacht on the Red Sea, did you check out any real estate, any open houses, any any broker caravans going on in Egypt? So I didn't uh, have a chance to do the broker caravan for, you know, quite some time. I was on a yacht um, going from island to island um, in the Red Sea, learning how to kite surf, and I, I was able to to actually do that. But a cool thing that I was able to do is, is when I was on ground or, you know, on land, I guess not on sea, um, I, I met with um, a lot of different store owners and shop owners. Uh, the cool thing about working with those folks or just meeting them is, you know, my name is Nile, like the river. So I yeah. have a really good in and they always ask me, what do you do? And I always say, you know, I sell real estate in New York city. And the second you say that they get very, very excited. Um, so they talk, I talked to a number of different people uh, in Hergada and again in Cairo about the real estate market. Um, there's a lot of villas that you could buy in Hergada for like 200K um, right on the water. It's a really sweet kite surfing spot in the Red Sea. And in Cairo, um, there's a lot of new developments happening. Uh, buildings are being ripped down and brand new towers are being made. Um, so the, the one interesting thing is uh, you basically pay for it for five years and then they start developing it. So it's kind of backwards you're literally just paying every quarter or every month um and then you and then you you're able to to own it eventually so they're wow. like five to eight year plays um which is a little risky if you're uh you know like a new york or a, just a buyer in the states to just put out that kind of money and not have a product for five or seven years well don't yeah. give me or sean any ideas on buying cheap real <laughs> estate because we do these lists of like the top affordable towns in the united states it's like a hundred thousand dollars and you know on some you know river in texas and sean and i want to go out and buy it but I if mean, you're telling me i can be on the red sea for two hundred thousand dollars i mean i don't know if you have your egypt real estate license yet but I, you know I, I might be interested well, I don't have it yet, but I got the plug to the guy. So, nice. you know, I know the guy. If you want an intro, I could, I could certainly do that for you, Matt. Was this a bucket list trip or was this something you've always wanted to do? Or is this just kind of a throw your hat in and go? You're you're a little bit muffled. Check, check. Can you um, hear me? What was, Sean was asking if that's a, uh, a bucket list item or is, is that something that, you, you know, you, you kind of just came together last minute? Yeah, no. So um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an investor in this company called Heli. What they do is um, adventure travel excursions throughout the world, you know, from, uh, you know, hell skiing to kite surfing to, you know, deep sea diving or surfing, you know, you name it, they have a, a vertical for the adventure travel. So um, I always, I always kind of uh, t tag along for these types of events. 
one thing that I did and the founder is a good friend of mine. My name is Niall, like the river. I've always wanted to go to Egypt. So um, I was, you know, talking to him about a year ago. I'm like, bro, if there's ever a place that I want to go, it's Egypt. Um, and he was able to find it and source the, the, the yacht and the, the kite school to teach all of us. We had 28 people on there. Um, and it was just like amazing to fulfill a life goal of mine to go to Egypt. And, you know, I saw the pyramids and that was uh, very, very special for me. Awesome. Yeah, you're knocking out a lot of birds with uh, with one stone, and I'm I'm glad we're talking about this because the this is like the exact reason that you came on our radar. It was um, an article um, that you were featured in on Inman.com a few months back, and the article was about space tourism and closing gifts. You know, people in the real estate industry they talk about closing gifts. You know, get a nice bottle of champagne, a gift basket, maybe like a watercolor of the the house. All all good ideas. Like, hey, they're all. They're all decent, okay ideas, but Niall, it doesn't sound like you're in that decent, okay idea category. You're, you're in that next level category. When I'm reading the article, you know, there's a guy in a mustard colored suit talking about how he's going to bring his clients to space if they buy <laughs> yeah. with them. I'm and giving if, a Nest thermostat. And, he's and, giving. Yeah, yeah, Sean's doing a Nest thermostat. <laughs> and, and if I'm a seller, even if I don't want to go to space, I'm thinking here's a guy who's figuring out how to get his clients into space. And then I'm, you know, selling a $5 million brownstone on the Upper West Side. Like, that's going to be a walk in the park. So how did you get involved with Adventure Perks, as you call it? And what's that experience been like for you and your clients? Yeah, no, it's, to be honest, it's something that, you know, I, I, I learned early, not early on, but I've, I've you know, look, I've, I've been in the industry for 13 years. It took a long time to kind of cultivate a network. Um, and a clientele and, and a base. And one of the things that I found to be very interesting and a reason why people would want to work with me is because, you know, I do have the plug for the adventure travel. And I do know um, if you want to go kite surfing, I know where to go and how to do that. I, I figured out, you know, heli skiing or surfing or wake surfing or, you know, a number of different verticals, you know, you name it, I've done it. I've been to Portugal. I've been to the, to the West Coast and LA and Miami and um, Turks and Caicos, for example. You know, and every single time I've always made it a point to bring a client. So um, the space tourism thing, uh, when I when I heard about that, you know, uh, Branson and, and Musk and everybody, uh, Bezos all going to space. You know, the first thing that I thought was, man, I'm already planning on going to space. And I always wanted to do it since I was a kid. And, you know, it's just becoming more and more uh, of, a, of a reality. And uh, what's even crazier is that when we were all together, um, on this yacht in the Red Sea, we were talking about the next frontiers. And I was like, bro, we got to figure out a way to do space. Like, why can't we do a space voyage for for three days in like two years? Like, let's figure that out and let's do it. Because I know those types of experiences are rare. Um, and if you're able to share those with with folks or clients, you know, they, they tend to be clients um, forever. Absolutely. Can Can you hear me yet? Am I muffled still? It's it's a little okay. it's a little muffled from your microphone. I don't know what it is. All right, all right, we'll we'll get it sorted out. I can hear it's just a little muffled. Okay. All right. So basically, the thing I was thinking is, well, what I wanted to ask you is, how did you get your start in real estate? Because I mean, we all have our paths, right? And I, me, I never thought I would be in real estate. I was an accountant before this, um, but what were you before you started real estate? And how did you you know transition into the real estate gig? Yeah, before I was in real estate, um, I was a college student. So fresh out of college, uh, I just moved to New York City and I was like, I'm just gonna be on TV. Um, I didn't really have a plan, didn't um, didn't really interview for anything. And my friend had bought a house in Bed-Stuy. I was living in the basement with him, um, literally sleeping on an air mattress. And the gentleman who sold him the house uh, owned a load of real estate. And one day he just stopped by and was like, what are you doing? And I. I was like, I don't know, I'm playing Mario Kart, you know, like Nintendo 64. Like, I still play that. You know, old school. Um, and he's like, have you thought about, you know, getting into real estate? And I said, not really, but like, you know, you got an opportunity for me? Um, and he said, yeah, we do. I'd, I'd love it if you, you know, stopped by my office tomorrow at 8 a.m. And um, I went there. There was a, a, a dry erase board with three different addresses um, and prices and bedroom accounts and I took a camera and took a couple pictures of those. Um, there's keys and I went to open the doors and took the pictures and put it on Craigslist. And uh, the first apartment I ever showed, I, I rented. It was like a $600 uh, basement apartment with rats in uh, Bushwick, Brooklyn. Um, I had no idea what was going on. Um, and that's how I, I, I got hooked. You know, I, I did one deal, two deals. And then the guy was like, can you sell a building? Uh, 
just sitting. I'm just outside on my terrace, so it's a little loud. I apologize. It's for all good. It to be that loud. Um, but I, you know, I, he's like, "Can you sell a building?" And uh, you know, I just, I didn't really market it. Um, I just called everybody I knew, and uh, from that, I learned the importance of being on the phone in real estate. And you know, I kind of got hooked and um, really just developed my skill over over the next 13 years. And you know, I, I joined. Um, you know, a number of different firms. You know, I started off just doing rentals at a company called Cooper and Cooper in Manhattan. Um, from there, I, I joined a company called Friedman Roth and I was a commercial real estate broker. I literally had a landlord directory book, note cards and a phone. Um, and my job was to make 300 phone calls a day um, and say anything that you could possibly say to, to get these people to give you the information on their building, what the rent well was, the expenses, um, try and sell land, try and sell, you know, multifamilies, you know, you name it, you know, I was making phone calls, um, trying to trying to source it for my for my team lead at the time. Um, from there, I, I started my own brokerage, um, I, I grew it to about 30 to 35 agents in about two and a half years. And then, you know, remarkably, this company called Compass came out that was raising money left and right. And, um, you know, luckily, I was able to to meet um, Ori and Robert early on. And, you um, and I was one of the first agents there. I think I was number uh, one, agent 182. I wow. think they have 25,000 across America. Um, but you know, one of my highlights there was recently, about a year ago, I sold an $18 million home um, in South Beach. Uh, it's a seven, seven bedroom mansion on Sunset Island four. Um, and you know, from there, I obviously got a lot of exposure being during the pandemic. And um, you know, I spoke to a number of different firms after that, that kind of reached out to me. And uh, you know, I spoke to Ryan as well. And you know, it was, uh, it was kind of a, a, an unbelievable marriage, right? You know, I, I have the Bravo experience. I love doing the videos. I have experience with that. You know, I was pushing myself, um, doing bigger and bigger real estate. So, you know, it's been a, it's, it's been a long journey and I've, I've worn a lot of different hats. Um, but I, but it's just been very exciting for me. It's literally the only thing that I've done um, since. I mean, look, have I done other things like prior when I was in college? I sold Cutco and you know I, I sold the you know the Cutco knives. Sure. You know, I sold those knives. Um, you know I've done door to door sales, selling home security systems. I used to you know shovel you know uh, uh, people's houses when it snowed in Connecticut, where I'm from, and make money and then go buy baseball cards, the whole box, and then sell, you know, individual cards um, at school. So I was kind of like always hustling um, in real estate. To me, it just felt very, very natural. And um, it was it was kind of an easy progression for me into that into that industry. Yeah, you said a lot of interesting things that I think we can pick apart. But let's start with this. Um, selling New York City real estate in March of 2020 um, appeared to look very difficult. Sean and I have read so many articles and a lot of them are, are scare articles of New York City's dead, it's never coming back. You know, New York City prices drop 84%, this, that, and the other. What what was that time period like for you? You know, let's say March of 2020 to July of 2020, where there was this extreme uncertainty. Everyone allegedly was moving from New York City to Florida or from New York City to any other place, you know, in the nation. What, what was that like for you? And, and how did you pivot during that time? Yeah, well, I'd say uh, March was a pretty confusing time, uh, especially being in New York City. One, um, you know, all my, when that stock market drop that one day. I mean, I probably had like $5 million in real estate that was about to get signed that just kind of fell off the cliff. And that was the first, first sign. Um, then I got, I got COVID, right? So, you know, focusing on my health was the most important thing. And we were literally in lockdown, so we couldn't go anywhere. Um, so we couldn't even show, at, 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 you know, for a number of months in the city. So real estate, you know, stopped. It literally was like, and there was nothing. Um, so, you know, I really started to think outside the box and, and say, look, you know, I already had the virus, which I think was a big advantage um, that I had. And because of that, I felt like, you know, I could travel, you know, and, and, and not worry about getting infected. So, you know, I, I, I made trips to Indiana, uh, to Miami, uh, Aspen, L.A., and, you know, I met with various clients um, that I've done business with in the past. And, you know, one of them, when I was in Indiana, said, hey, you know, I'm thinking about moving to Miami for a number of different reasons. But, you know, for one, I mean, New York's on lockdown. I can't even go outside. You know, let's let's figure something out. And look, you could be a real estate agent where you just refer somebody, you know, oh, hey, let's just uh, we'll refer you. And, you know, I'm still in New York or wherever. 
um, and call that a day. But, you know, I said, look, let me let me partner with a local real estate expert down there that I know very well. I've been spending time in Miami, so I'll go down with you and help liaise on the sale. Um, and that was a lot of fun, you know, doing that. It also showed that, you know, I go above and beyond for, for my customers. Initially, when I got down to Miami, I rented my uh, my client a uh, the home that he ended up purchasing. Um, I rented it for about 80000 a month. So great. I went down there. I helped him secure a deal. He's moving in. You know, I'm back in New York. You know, what do I do? Do I go down there and, and welcome him with a with a party, you know, or do I just stay here and kind of call it that, right? You know, my main thing is, you know, I teach customer relationship management um, at Baruch College. And I also, you know, I'm very privileged to teach um, the Sell It Like Sirhan course, the capstone, um, where customer relationship management is my is my focus. And um, I said, I'm going to go down to Miami and, and make sure this, this client is, is very well taken care of. After the deal was done, I went down there and I knew um, promoters and DJs and I ended up setting up a very big party. I had a budget um, and I used that budget very well. Um, and uh, the party was incredible. We had um, probably like 125 people show up and maybe way more than uh, expected. But, you know, it was such a great experience that my client said, you know, this is one of the greatest parties in my life. I really love this home and I love the layout. I want to buy it. And I, I said, whoa, whoa, you know, we're having a good time here. You've lived here for 48 hours. Uh, let's just let's just breathe. Um, but 14 days later, we closed on it. So, you know, what I learned was, you know, a couple of things. One, just being nimble and and um, in not letting these ideas of a barrier stop you. You know, he said, I want to be in Miami. And I said, well, I'll go with you. Like, I didn't really have much going on anyway. Right. So let me go take a shot in a different market and partner with somebody. So just having the balls to do that, I think was really important and it helped me a lot. Um, and then also following through, you know, most people can do a deal, um, but are they throwing a party for the person when they're done? Are they following up in the right way? Is there a follow up? And most people don't do that because they're lazy. So doing that extra, um, that extra layer of um, of customer service, I think um, you know, was proven. I proved it. I, that whole theory, I really proved it, and I sold the eighteen million dollar house. Um, and you know, it was just a really exciting uh, period for me. And it's been just a a, a great um, example of you know, if you want to do it, and the world is um, over, and everyone's writing articles that New York is dead. You know, other markets not, might not be dead. You know, let me go source what those are. You know, New York will be back at some point, but who says I can't go to LA and look at real estate there or Aspen or Miami? Um, you know, and it, it works. Right. And on the topic of uh, Florida, I mean, selling an $18 million house is, is incredible. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, your, your upbringing and, uh, you know, living in your friend's basement. W what you didn't mention was um, a country club. What you didn't mention was, you know, growing up playing polo because it doesn't sound like, you know, you, you did either of those two. And a lot of things, agents are oftentimes like, oh, well, he just knows, you know, people from his parents' country club or they just know rich people. I mean, it sounds like you're the exact, uh, you, you know, you didn't grow up in a country club. So, I mean, is it really just that simple of do the effing work, put in the, the effort and actually follow through. Everyone's looking for that secret sauce, but it sounds like your, your path to, to get into network with, with who you, and where you're at just comes down to the nitty gritty. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't have, um, I didn't, you know, I didn't grow up super rich. I grew up very modestly. Um, and that was kind of a driver for me just to, just to be able to step out of my comfort zone. And, you know, what I really liked about real estate was that, you know, the income and the commissions are potentially, uh, limitless, right. And it all comes down to what you put into it. And I put a lot into it when I first started and I really, really, really wanted to, um, to do it. But at the end of the day, you learn that you got to also work smart too, and you got to follow through and do what you say you're going to do. And I think that's something that's um, often, you know, overlooked in this in this business. Um, and if you just actually focus on it in a very basic way, um, it actually can pay dividends in the long run. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you know, we always say that work ethic is it. And people think that, oh, he's on Bravo. He's been on this. He, now he works for Sir Sirhan. He just, you know, got there easily. But truthfully, it's so much work. And, you know, you start at the very bottom. He was doing rentals at the very beginning. You know, he did the rentals just like you. I mean, you started the rentals. Yeah, I we like all that. Start, I started rentals only. Yeah, yeah. we start at, at the bottom and you have to work and work. And he's been doing it 13 years. It took him 13 years to get here. I've been doing 18. It took a long time. So it's not just, hey, 
here we are. I'm, I'm, I work for Sirhan and I'm selling multi-million dollar places. No, it took a lot of work and drive to do that. Yeah. And let, let's hop into the brokerage for a minute now. Be, being at Compass, you know, agent number 182 is, is incredible in, in its own right to, to see if, you know, where that brand has gone. And, you know, Sean and I, we, I don't know if you know this, but we work for Century 21, so not affiliated whatsoever. But um, talk to us about, you know, what, what lured you to Compass and then ultimately, you know, what, what lured, lured you to Sirhan? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I had my own brokerage, you know, what I realized I was spending a lot of my time on was, you know, does the paperwork or do we have water for the agents? Are we doing that? And, you know, I was 28, 29 years old, you know, worrying about those things. And I, you know, I thought to myself, look, I'm, I'm the top guy here, but, you know, I'm not anywhere near where I think I should be. And, you know, I needed to be pushed. Um, and be the be the be the lowest guy in the totem pole so that I could learn from the best. Um, so that was that was one of the main reasons why I went to Compass. And look, they were they were doing big things and they had a lot of buzz and a lot of splash. And you know, I learned so many amazing things. And I I feel like that's where I really you know grew and, and bud budded as a as an agent. You know, before that I was a manager. Before that I was a young guy on a team just making phone calls all day. Um, get yelled at if I wasn't dialing. Right. Um, so, you know, it was, it was great from that experience, but you know, what really lured me to Sirhan was the fact that, um, look, compass was IPOing and I quit a week before the IPO and I left, you know, a, a sizable amount of money, um, on the table by, by leaving early. But what the draw for me was, is that I was agent 25 at Sirhan, right. And everybody else who's at compass who might think about joining Sirhan is not going to because of the IPO, the golden handcuffs. I got to stay for a year. I said that, you know, I don't, I'm going to bet on myself. I don't, I don't want to wait to make money from somebody. I'm going to get in early. I'm going to learn how to do uh, video and, 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 and make real estate video and hopefully take it to the next level. And, you know, that's what I've done. And, you know, I'm certainly, uh, I've gotten tremendous exposure by doing that. And um, it was a big risk. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I love Ryan, you know, I teach, um, I teach at Baruch and sell it like Sirhan is a book that I've been teaching for a number of years in my customer relationship management class. And, you know, you gotta, you gotta go out and, uh, and, and do it. And, um, you know, Ryan, Ryan respected that. And, um, it was just, it was a, it was a happy, uh, a happy moment for me to actually be like, Hey, you know, you know, I'm coming here and I'm going to, I'm going to actually learn and, and put the effort in and, and wear a suit and a tie every day. The thing that was great about Compass is that it was like a tech company, but like also I was wearing a t-shirt and to showings because like it was a tech culture. Um, you know, when I first got to Sirhan, it was great because my clients were like, I love that you wear a suit and tie. And I was like, why? And they said, well, we watch million dollar listing and that's what we expect. And like, we had another agent who wore a t-shirt and like, we just didn't think that was professional. So we really appreciate you. And it's like, as something as basic as that, something that you can control, you know, it was, it was, it was very like warmly welcomed for me to go to Sirhan and wear a suit and tie every day and, and, and take myself um, seriously. And, and others notice that. And it's like, especially if you're starting out and you're a new agent, you know, you could control if you show up 10 minutes, 15 minutes early. You can control if you're wearing a suit and a tie. You know, you, you, you can't control a lot of other things, but it, you can control those things. And if you have that mindset and you say, look, I'm going to start here. I know I'm on, I came to New York. I didn't know anybody. I literally knew nobody. And now, you know, it's, it's been a long, long time, but you know, I know everybody and it, and, it, and it's, a, it's a gradual thing, but you have to have that mentality. And if you can control it, you know, then you should do it because there's uh, there's other people out there. And uh, especially living in New York, it's like, if you're not doing it, somebody else will, and your time will be short lived. And that's what I love about New York is it really exposes, you know, uh, people like, are you really who you say you are? And if, if you are great, you'll be in New York for a long time. If not, you know, you'll probably be out pretty soon, you know, pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. And there's, there's a lot of things I took from that. I mean, first of all, we dress in a suit every day and, that, and that's what we always feel is like, if you're going to, if you're going to live professionally, you're going to portray that to your clients. You're going to pick up the people that you want. I mean, it's all about being professional. Number two, what I love to hear is it's not always about the money either. Right. So, you know, there's so many people that are always after the money. And as soon as they get the money, they're on to the next one. Right. And they don't, they don't follow up. They don't do the right things. Whereas you, at Compass, you left all this money on the table for the opportunity. And the opportunity is way bigger than the money. And there's so many people that would have trapped themselves in, the, in that particular instance and just stayed there for that money. 
but you're going to see it all over again. You're going to get, I mean, there's, it's so much more rewarding to be where you are, you know? Exactly. No, it's, it's very well said. And I appreciate you summarizing that because it's not always about the money. You know, it's like a lot of people are They count the money before they, they go or they, they stick around just for the money. You know, for me, I'm I, look, I, I'm a risk taker. I'm single. I don't have kids. I'm, I'm sure everyone has different scenarios, but like, I'm all about the risk. And if I'm able to, to bet on myself, I'm taking the biggest risk that I possibly can because I know that I can control it. And 90% of the business and 90% of this is, is just showing up. You know, are you making phone calls? I don't care who you call, call your electrician. That guy knows somebody call your doctor. That guy knows somebody and pressure them. Don't just let them say, Oh, I don't know anybody. Ah, ah, ah. You want to be in my network and I'll open my network to you. You got to open your network to me, man. That's how it works. You know? And, and there's a moment where you have to kind of say that to, to people or friends and be like, look, if I'm not your guy, then like, you know, what, what am I here? What, what is this relationship? You're inspiring That's me, brother. You're inspiring me. <laughs> hey, you, you got a lot of properties that need electrical work. You got to remind your electrician that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, um, you know, on, on the topic of Sirhan, I mean, the seller like Sirhan course is widely popular. It's it's making waves. I see you guys got a great community over there. And I, I don't want to boost your ego up too much, but the, the Sirhan brand and the videos that you guys put out, that, that's essentially the gold standard for real estate agents across the world of like, this is how you should be putting out content. I watch your videos, whether it's, you know, you're on a rooftop of a townhouse or an office or you know, doing a, a home alone parody or something. I, I'm always looking at other markets to at high quality content to try to see how I can make it work um, in my area. And, you know, I, I want to know how big is personal branding for you? Because, you know, on Instagram, you have the, the Mr. Clean avatar as your as your photo. You know, in the Inman article, you referenced yourself as the, the space realtor. And, you know, how important is it for you to create this almost larger than life personality for your own personal brand yeah i mean look my you know again you guys are seeing me now right and that's that's the crazy thing is like my friends who have known me for a long time i've been doing this for forever you know i mean i i was taking video of myself and making mix-up videos in 2006 for example the first video that i ever shot um that went viral has 27 million views on youtube that was in 2010 right I published my 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 website um, in 2009. So I've, I've been operating NileLunger.com for 12 years. And I write blog posts about myself as a publishing medium, right? And so what I've done is I've been able to um, kind of sp spread my name on Google. And, and a lot of those articles are, are literally myself writing about myself. For example, if I'm in an Inman, Inman article, um, then I'm going to go on my website and I'm going to transcribe that. And I'm going to give credit to Inman right? Just so that Google recognizes it. And then my name is tied to people like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, right? Or Richard Branson. Um, and then, you know, they Google me and then Branson comes up or an image from the Inman comes up. Those are all things that I've been doing for a long time. Um, and, and recently when I was uh, living with my friend in Aspen uh, in, during the pandemic for a little bit, uh, he said, you know, you, you have this crazy personality. You should be like, you should be like a caricature of yourself. And I said, what do you mean by that? He's like, dude, you're like, you're like Mr. Clean or something. <laughs> and literally I just Googled Mr. Clean and the picture that I have up was the first image. And I was like, yeah, that works. And I put it up kind of as like a joke. You know, I wasn't really thinking that it would end up being, you know, what it, what it is, but like, it, like, I mean, I even have the earring. Like, <laughs> I, like, an earring? like well, I'm, I'm like wearing a suit, but I have this and people are like, well, what is that? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm Mr. Clean. Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, everything I do is clean. My social media is clean. My real estate's clean. If I sell a place, it's clean. The images are clean. The video's clean. And that's that's my that's my brand is like, I'm I'm clean. You know, I am the gold standard. I represent that. I'm I'm wearing a suit. I'm not gonna yield in that because I know that if I do it, it's also hilarious. But yeah. people like recognize me. You know, I mean, I have people that recognize me on the street. And, and that's something that's new. And like, you know, the Bravo show was great for me. I've had people come up to me like in the weirdest of places um, and be like, are you that guy? But even more so than Bravo, just by being out there and, and active on the social side and, and having the videos with with Sirhan. I mean, it's like people are like, are you the guy? Are you 
are you Mr. Clean? And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> um, but you know, it just goes to show that it's working, you know? And I also believe that you can't just be on one platform. You know, a lot of people are just on Instagram. Instagram shut down the other day. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, offline. And I've been telling people this for a long time. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. Everybody's just on Instagram. And I got 100,000 followers on Instagram, but I'm like, how many YouTube subscribers do you have? What do you, what's, your, what's your TikTok numbers? Oh, okay, so it's nothing. So what if Instagram got shut off tomorrow? When, what if some kid in you know, Africa develops the newest cool thing and everyone forgets about Instagram? It might happen, it might not. But I always hedge, hedge my bets. So, I mean, I got 4,000 subscribers on YouTube, over 4,000 followers on TikTok. I'm verified on TikTok. I got you know, 7,000 plus on Instagram, hopefully be at 10K by the end of the year. Um, you know, I have my own blog, I'm on Twitter. Uh, you name it. And, and in LinkedIn, I'm publishing content on LinkedIn. Um, every time I have a video, I try and put it out there. You know, it's like, it's a lot. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this is, this is easy. But, you know, the way that I find like having a good time is, is, is like working on this. And most people might go out and have, you know, cocktails or whatever with friends and, and pass the time playing video games or whatever. You know, I'm not opposed to those things. I'm just, I just know that in order to, you know, kind of hit a pinnacle, especially in New York City, you got to constantly be on top of it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm committed to that. So at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, I'm on my phone, I'm editing, you know, the great way to do it. And maybe this is helpful for you, Matt, is like when you make a long form video, right? There's a Gary V content model. If you Google Gary V content model, what you do, the whole idea is to create a, a long form video and then you publish that to YouTube. From there, what you do is you look at the analytics and you find out where the most engagement is. And then you take those sn snippets and then you redistribute them um, as like, what I do is I'll just take my, for example, 255 Manhattan Avenue, that townhouse where I was hanging off of it. You know, that first clip was amazing, right? So I just took that five, six seconds and I put that on TikTok, right? And then I took the next 20 seconds data and then I put that on TikTok. So from one video asset, I can create 10 different ones and everyone's like well i don't know what to do on TikTok." i'm like bro you already have the content just go get the app and just cut it up put some cool music over it. don't think and just publish 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 and you know it works i mean i had 600 followers in july on TikTok, and i was like oh let me just you know let me give it an effort here you know i got four thousand in you know in two months two and a half months three months maybe three months <laughs> you, Who's counting? Yeah, you, you'd be proud of me. I filmed, a, I, I edited and published a TikTok yesterday. So that's uh, the the views on TikTok are insane. Like you publish it, it, it might get like thousands of views. It might get like ten, but uh, it goes to show that like you can just put out content and uh, it, it can just explode. But w one thing I wanted to mention with all of the stuff that you're doing, yeah, me and Sean are just finding out about you now. But you're you're like the perfect example of like the ten year overnight success. <laughs> it's like you, you've been like grinding and I, I hate to say grinding in 2021, but like you've been grinding for like so hard that like now everything that's like happening beneath the level is 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 emerging. And, you know, on on Instagram, especially that that blue check mark, that's like social currency. Like when when, you know, your clients see that when other realtors that are thinking about sending you referrals see that. I mean, that just adds another layer to it because, you know, some agents, they have the blue check mark, you know, if they've been on a TV show, but, you know, they're not really active. You, you're out there on the Red Sea. You're posting property tour videos. You're doing, you know, personal branding videos. So so that alone is, is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, look, I even, when I interviewed with Ryan, you know, I said I said to him, I'm like, dude, there's, there was never a point for me to try and be on million dollar listing. I was like, because you already exist, man. That's what I said. I'm like, you're already there. What am I going to do? Yep. So what I did, Ryan, is I got on another Bravo TV show, a camp show, just to get in there. And I look, I mean, I'm a real estate broker and I'm doing a camp show, but I did it for a reason. By the way, I don't drink. I did the whole thing sober. Didn't have a drug, no drinks, no drugs, no nothing when I did it. Right. Because I treated it like a business opportunity and I became friends with the producers. And when everyone was getting drunk and making complaints about, oh, this is tough. I was going to the producers like, all right, put two cameras on me. I'm going to go light these people up right now. Love it. I learned how to deal with the cameras. I learned how to deal with being mic'd up and having uh, a microphone on you. And they had a microphone in your bed. When you were sleeping, there's a, I like well, turned over one day and there's like a mic. Like, Are they f you kidding me while I'm sleeping? Like, holy. Shit. 
<laughs> but like you learn how to deal with that. You're not just, you know, flying off the seat of your pants, just saying random. You know, you're, you're more measured. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes on those, uh, like, reality TV shows like The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, they'll have, like, a realtor on. But oftentimes, they're, like, the punching bag. It's like they're the joke of the show. And it's like, man, you have this glorious opportunity, and you're just going to go, like, get hammered and then, like, go lie to, like, The Bachelorette or something. It's dumb. Yeah. I mean, they want you to do that. The producers are pushing you to do that, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Um, but I fought against it and said, look, I'm more of a personality sober. Like, I'm going to fucking blow this thing up. Like, you don't realize it. Just trust me. There's a reason why you wanted me to be on this show. Okay? Let me go do my thing. You know? And um, look, it was a lot of sacrifice, but, like, it helped me get the check mark. And, like, when I got that, I was like, holy shit. Like, wow. You know, I even fucking cried. I was like, man, I've, I've literally came to New York with the goal of being on TV. Right? It's it amazing. I couldn't believe it, right? Then I got the check mark. Then I got validated. I'm like, holy. Then I sold an $18 million place. And then I joined Sirhan. And it's just like, wow. It was dark for a very long period of time. 10 yeah. years, man. I was eating dollar pizza. I was sleeping on my friend's couches. I was Airbnb my apartment so that I could pay rent, literally, like not too long ago. And, you know, to see all these things like hit like that, especially during a pandemic, you know, it just goes to show that like, if you do have faith in yourself and you, and you bet on yourself, you could get there. It's just a long journey and there's no quick fix. I mean, look, yeah, if you know the right people and your dad, whatever, but like, that's very rare. And those people aren't working as hard potentially as me. I know a lot of them that do, but you know, I'm, I'm going to outwork you 10, 10 days out of the seven days of the week. Cause you're on the seven day a week program. I'm not sleeping, dude. I get 10 days a week, you know? <laughs> well, that's the thing is, I, I mean, real estate is about grinding, right? You have to grind, you have to have the work ethic or else you're not going to last. And that's what a lot of people don't get. Right. And there's so many different aspects of real estate that we get into now that, you know, we've got to do all of the social media stuff. I've been doing this 18 years this is nowhere close to what I signed up for, right? It's like, oh, I'm just gonna go sell a house. You know, now it's like, we've gotta do 20 other things all the time. But you know, what I wanted to talk to you about was when you sat, finally got in front of the camera, was this a hard transition for you to actually do this, like to talk? Because there's so many people out there that we always talk to and we're like, hey, you gotta get in front of the camera, you have to start doing this stuff, but it's a really tough thing to get in front of. So was this a natural thing for you or was there a barrier for you as well? So uh, it is natural. It yeah. is something that's natural for me. Okay. Um, when I was in college, my senior year playing football every week, I would make a video, um, uh, basically a vlog of that week. So um, I, I learned by doing that and producing those videos that I really enjoyed being in front of a camera. Um, was it easy when I was on the TV show for the first, you know, weekend when there's cameras in your face? Absolutely not. You know, and, and there's a learning curve. You know, was I a good cold calling guy when I moved to New York City? Absolutely not. You know, I, I was, to be frank, you know, I would mumble on the phone <laughs> and I wasn't clear with my words. Yeah. Um, now I'm incredible on the phone. I could smoke people, like literally get you to just eat out of the palm of my hand just because of repetitions. So, yeah, I mean, look, it was it was definitely nerve wracking for, you know, a day or two when I was on the show. And I think that's normal. But a lot of the other people on the show carried that for for multiple weekends and multiple episodes um i got over it pretty quick and i when i when i joined there's a plane there's a helicopter right above me i'll tell the story one more second when i when i first got on the show one of the producers says um so niall how do you feel feel about everything and i say you know what man my arm has been tired for a very long time and i'm really happy that it's not tired anymore and he said what do you mean by that and i said dude i've been filming myself for the last 15 years so it is such a blessing for me to finally have somebody actually do the filming of me and i could focus on being me the personality that i am so that that was uh, that was a really cool experience to, to tell him that and be like, you know, I'm just really happy that I'm not the one videotaping myself, but it's practice. You know, I've been videotaping myself for years and yeah, now it shows it's like, oh, he's he's really good at it or he's natural. Yeah. I mean, it came to me naturally. I enjoy it. But was I good at it? 
Did I deliver my words? Did I say like or um? Was I stuttering? Do you go back and watch what you've done and then look for ways to improve? You know, or do you just, uh, are you, do you show up? When I do my property tours, I have a list of everything I'm gonna say. So, I mean, look, when you get camera in front of you, things change, right? But for the most part, I'm spending time the night before in my apartment, walking back and forth, saying my lines, how I wanna deliver them. Is this line gonna be exciting? Is this line gonna just show? You know, it's like, and I could worry in, about my tempo and pace. Um, and I think all that stuff has a little bit of drama to it. And potentially there's like a little acting, but like it, it's the repetitions that allow me to see. And then going back and I played football in college, right? So after you play a football game, you go back and watch the film, right? Every, I'm, the, I'm my own biggest critic. I never look at a video and I'm like, oh, I'm great. This is great. I'm always like, this is fantastic. I did a great job, but how can I improve, right? And I don't think people are students um, of themselves. They just think, oh, I'm really good at this. And oh, I'm just going to go in there and wing it. Oh, it's a really airy apartment. It's like, no, dude, what are the real features? Why aren't we saying specific things about the apartment? Why can't you deliver, you know, two or three sentences straight without the camera cutting? You know, that's what I work on. And that's what I focus on. And if you look at the views that my videos get versus other agents at Sirhant, you know, I think it's very clear. You could just look at the views. It's clear that I do that. And you got to work on yourself. That's the most important thing. I'll never go into anything blind. I don't walk in and say, all right, I'm going to go wing it. You know, that's that's the fool's trap. Oh, you were on TV. You could go wing it. No, I was on TV. I'm going to work harder to make sure that I keep and maintain that image. That's right. right. That's right. my fault. Yeah. And, and sometimes when people watch your videos or Ryan's videos or – my videos, it, it looks like we're winging it. Like it looks like it just is coming naturally, but what they're not seeing is us staying up late to memorize those lines, to work on those inflections. Everyone thinks that it, the final, everyone just sees the final product. They didn't see the 10 takes that it took to actually get that scene right. Yeah, now, and I don't, I don't, just about the takes, I do all the preparation so that I don't have to do 10 takes. I mean, yeah. yeah. It takes me 10 takes. It doesn't take Nile 10 takes. Well, that's the thing. The is though, production team is like, holy sh**. Like, you're just a one take guy. I'm like, yeah, bro. Next. Let's go to the next one. One, one take, take Jake. Jake. Because I'm prepared. Yeah. Because I know how I want to look, how I want to deliver it. Quick, fast, exciting. Right? you got to have those little things in the video because people have no patience. They're just like, ah, no good. Ah, no good. But if you're like, hey, I'm hanging out this building and you're like a little <laughs> crazy, they're like, oh, Wait, hold on. Let me watch that. You know, and it's those little things uh, that make the difference between 7,000 views and 30,000 views. Yeah, right. Well, hey, uh, we're, we're coming up on, uh, on a time barrier here. I, I want to be respectful of your time, so, so let's, let's start to wrap it up. Um, you had mentioned Aspen. You'd mentioned L.A., Miami. What, what's next for Niall Lundgren? You know, not, not the whole, you know, where do you see yourself in five years, but – but how are you, you know, growing? How are you expanding? And, and you know, where are we going to find you here in a couple of years? Yeah, no. Uh, so first off, you know, uh, Florida is going to be going to be a big market for me coming uh, moving forward. Um, there's still a little uh, a lot that I have to do and Sirhan has to do in order to open up. But we will be opening up down in uh, in South Florida um, here in New York City. I think that's my main focus right now. And I really want to hire a number of different agents. You know, we're kind of at with the number of business that we're doing right now. You know, I'm, I'm very much at capacity, uh, especially considering my travel schedule. But <laughs> but, you know, I'd love to hire some some people here in the city and, and really just um, expand on what we've been doing. More videos, more content, um, more teaching with the cell like Sir Hant and the brand and, you know, presenting. You know, I'd love to do more podcasts and, you know, really bring myself around the whole the media entity like the media entity in my opinion for myself is me and that's my brand and you know my goal is to is to be out there as much as I possibly can love it well Sean has always talked about moving to Florida or selling real I'm estate you, in buddy. Florida so he may buy a property from you or he may want to join Sir Hans at some point in Florida heck yeah um, all right well, keep not, me not, posted I will <laughs> Niall, how, how can people connect with you? Buyers, sellers, um, other real estate agents. What, what's the best way to connect with you? I really appreciate that. Um, so you could just find, you could just find me. Um, all my handles are the same. It's at Niall Lundgren, N I L E L U N D G R E N. Um, YouTube, Facebook, you name it. Um, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, you name it. I'm there. 
Love it. Well, I will have that listed and linked in the description below. And for Niall, Sean, and myself, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you then. Now, thank you. You're the man.